honestly, I was, I was speechless. It's like as soon as he came in and told us the news, we just kind of thought it was going to be a standard, regular meeting, like get ready to, for the spring, this is the plan. And when he told us that, everyone kind of looked around and we were, I was really like shocked. Uh, it, was, it was definitely crazy, just because you, the legacy that he's built here. You can see all those banners right there. It, it's, it's, it was definitely mind blowing, but I mean, he has to do what's best for him and it was his decision. Uh, my first thought was very, very surprised. Um, I didn't really know how to handle it. I mean, obviously we all committed here to play for him and play for his program, and obviously he's done great things here, and it was just a very shocking moment. Uh, I know just me personally, and I think the whole team, we were shocked. Um, not something we were expecting or think we were gonna hear. Uh, so I would say we were all shocked and kind of surprised by it. Those are the reactions of West Liberty basketball players after finding out legendary head coach Jim Crutchfield had resigned. His legacy not only touched the lives of his players, but also left his mark on the NCAA record book. Jim Crutchfield has the highest career winning percentage in college basketball history among coaches with 10 or more years at NCAA schools, and his teams have appeared in an NCAA Division II record 112 consecutive top 25 polls. The first time I met Coach was uh, I was a player in high school, a senior in high school, and I was coming up here on my recruiting visit. And I was accompanied with my mother, and we were, we were going around on our uh, visit here around campus, and, and Coach took us to the cafeteria, and I can remember him kind of showing me around the cafeteria. Um, and he, he showed me the desserts, and my mother looked at me, and she said, Oh, Ben, you love milk and cookies. Um, so Coach Crutch, like Coach Crutchfield's famous recruiting story that he tells every recruit, and he embarrasses me. In like seventh or eighth grade, I came up here for a, a Coach Hallett camp at the time, and uh, he would come and talk, and I got to know him and met him then as an eighth grader. I never really thought six to seven years later, however long it was, that I'd actually end up playing for him. But uh, the opportunity came, he gave me the opportunity, and uh, I never looked back, and I'm thankful, I'm thankful that he did that for me. The first time I came here, he looked at me on my visit, and he said, David, I hope you're in shape, because I knew coming here we'd be pressing a lot in open gyms, we played to 100, so he looked at me and said, David, I hope you're in shape, and he started laughing. And at first I was like, what do you mean? Like, I think I'm in shape. And when I first got done, I looked at him and I said, Coach, I'm not in shape. Like, I said, I'm really not in shape. Though Crutchfield was known for his calm demeanor on the court, he wasn't afraid to voice his opinion to referees and his players. Yeah, I mean, I got yelled at all the time. I mean, he was, I think Devin Hurd and I are probably the, the two most guys he yelled at the most. Uh, he was a guy that uh, really could get on, get on you if you're making mistakes. Yeah, I've, I've seen him. I've seen him get pretty mad at players. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, you, you know he's mad. He's a winning coach, so you want to go out, go out there, and just make sure that you don't mess up. My first on-court experience would obviously be uh, probably the scrimmages, even before the year happened. Just the way he kind of talked to me and coached me through things. Obviously, me being a freshman, there's things I got to learn from the guys and from Coach Crutchfield. As a transfer, I was really known just to be a three-point shooter, and I st stood around the three-point line all the time. I came here and played the five, and it kind of was out of my comfort zone. But he, he helped me all along the way to uh, work on my skills, work on development, how to play that position, and be a pretty big impact for the team at that position that I wasn't really used to, and I'm, I'm, I thank him for that. Um, off the court, he just he kept me accountable. He kept me make sure I was one of the first people here, being a leader, leading by example. Um, in film, making sure everybody's paying attention, and during practices, just make sure everybody's looking at him. I mean, he, he was a guy of respect, and if he's talking, everybody should be looking at him. So I would say he, he really showed me a bunch of things. And I had the opportunity to pick his brain all the time on the road recruiting, and the one thing that he would always say is just be yourself. You know, don't, don't do something just because you see other coaches doing it or don't do things because you, saw, you see me doing it. Do what you think is best. He really showed me the meaning of working hard and taking whatever I'm doing to the next level. On the court, he was the winningest coach in NCAA history. But there was a lighter side to Jim Crutchfield. If we won, he'd be scouting local barbecue restaurants where we were going to eat after the game. He's, uh, he loves barbecue. The one time we were in Fort Lauderdale, and he backdoored one of, our, one of our teammates and actually scored on him in a legit live scrimmage. One of the funny things he does is when he gets into a hotel room, the first thing he does is he rips the top blanket off of the, off the bed. So I, I don't think a lot of people know he's a germaphobe. When we were in practice and Crutchfield was shooting the ball and our player, our teammate Brady Arnold came from behind him and blocked his shot.
West Liberty fans and players will reminisce on Jim Crutchfield's time on the Hilltop. We celebrate the times that they were here and the benefits and, and the joy that they gave us and then wish them well in the future, but at no time did we ever want to lose Coach Crutchfield. First reaction was, I'm leaving. And um, the next day he sat me down and we talked about it and just his whole process and his thought and my process and my thought. I think everybody kind of, you know, had that thought in their head maybe. It is a lot to think about. Uh, you don't know exactly what all is going on. A, a lot of emotion. Turns out I am leaving. Um, don't know where I'm going yet. Um, so in the process of making that decision, but I am leaving for sure. Um, the impact that he had on our community, and as you see, our, our games are not just uh, West Liberty students in, in the crowd. There is a tremendous community support for West Liberty basketball. The best coach in, in the country. I think Jim Crutchfield, and, and you can, people can argue this, but if I were to have a coach, or if I wanted to play for a coach, I'm definitely 100% choosing Jim Crutchfield. He just, he's just a good guy, so everything kind of fell off from that. I think that's one of the biggest things anybody could say about him. He has a passion for the game and he gives us his all, so I think that's something that everybody kind of gave back to him throughout the years. He's joined the conference I am in, so I guess we're rivals. I'll see you soon, Coach, and best of luck. Uh, I, I surely will miss working for Coach Crutchfield. Um, he was a great guy to work for and obviously a mentor to me. Uh, I miss him and, and wish him the best of luck down at Nova Southeastern. And now all we can say is thank you, Coach Crutchfield and good luck.